What is up, guys? Yes, I landed an interview with Shaleen frickin' Johnson. She's like the titan of titan. I've looked up to this woman forever. Guys, in a world where influencers come and go, this woman stuck around. She sold millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars of products online. Gee, I wonder if she might know something about digital marketing, affiliate marketing. This is what this whole channel's about. So I reach out to her. I'm like, hi, Shaleen Johnson. Do you want to come on my YouTube channel? She's like, uh, yeah, I'll come. I'm like, what? I'm a nobody. Guys, I've got 1,400 followers on this Instagram account. I just started two months ago, but luckily I've been able to sell thousands and thousands of dollars of my first ever digital marketing course. I sell this affiliate marketing course. It comes with master resale rights. I ask her about this. I'm like, what do you think of master resale rights? She's gonna talk about this in this interview. I asked her, how the frick have you stayed around in a world where hardly anybody stays around because you know, you get your five minutes of fame and then you're out of here. Not for her. Guys, she's lived her whole life on her own terms and she is explaining to you exactly what she did i asked her amazing questions okay stuff that you're gonna be blown away by i'm pretty proud of myself like one of the questions like i asked her was like um what are like the three things that you shouldn't do on instagram and she gave me stuff that I'm like, yes, that is why people aren't selling. That's why they're not winning. So you're going to want to grab your popcorn, grab your Red Bull. This video is sponsored by, just kidding. And <laughs> you can see I'm amped. I'm excited. I, I, this is a couple of Red Bulls in here. But I just know how much value is packed in this conversation with Shalene Johnson. So do not watch this distracted. Go put your little Facebook away, a little Instagram. Take notes. I took notes. I wrote them down. Look at these are my notes right here. Yeah. So go ahead, take notes, watch this interview. And by the way, you're going to want to subscribe right now because you're going to forget about it. Um, because my next interview is with this girl named Fran and she sold $900,000 worth of products in three months. She sells a digital marketing course, the same course I sell. I have her on the channel. I am going to ask her so many questions. You guys in the comments below, submit your question for Fran. But in the meantime, let's go to the Titan of Titans. She has sold so much stuff in so many different niches. She has a million things to say in this interview. Guys, without further ado, please welcome to the channel, Miss Shalene Frickin Johnson. Like I'm a nobody in this space. Look at my subscriber growth. And yet here you are. This is guys, this is super telling of how to do it because she's not scared of the micro nicher of the guy who's got like, so why are you even on this channel? Good question. Like you know what I am scared of? I'm, sc are I'm scared of phonies. I'm scared of phonies. It's something that I'm scared of. I just, I, I have no, like somebody's follower account doesn't interest me at all. Wow. How well someone's known doesn't interest me at all. Whether it's like somebody's resume, none of that stuff interests me. I just, I like doing things with likable people, interesting people. I never look at follower account. Like I just don't. Wow. I mean, sometimes I have to when like things are presented to me or someone's pitching me to be on the show. I'm like, I just don't right. have time this week. But when it's someone who's come across my radar, then I'm, I'm automatically, there's a connection. Then that's who I want to do things with. Yeah. So like I guys, just so you know, watching this, like I had no previous contact with with Shalene. Uh, she just popped in my Instagram one day and I'm like, what the flip? Because this again, guys, I know you guys are watching this because you're interested in digital marketing and maybe you're trying to sell something and you're struggling. You have no clue who's watching your stuff. This this interview right here is testament to that. So like, how did you even stumble upon my little reels and stuff on Instagram? Like, mm -hmm. it's just. Um, I, w the honest truth was I was looking at the, um, amount of people who were searching for master reselling oh. rights. And I wanted to look at what people have been, who's broken it down on video and done it well. And I watched a, a couple of videos of yours and you weren't breaking it down. You were selling it and if you will, or explaining what it was. And of all the people I saw who were explaining what it was, I'm like, this is how it should be done, honestly. And and so I saw a few videos where I'm like, they're just not explaining what this is with an un. Everyone has a bias, but yeah, they're yeah. not really explaining what this is without an agenda. I have no agenda. I don't. I don't care what people sell. I just want people to have their own thing, and I want people to do oh. what it's best for them. Uh, so I saw your video, and then I was like, oh, he's first of all, he's likable. He's. Uh, I have a good radar for trustworthy people. I like real and so then i um before keeping I it real on the reels before i reached out to you i before i reach out to anyone i deep dive 
Okay. So you're like, who is this person? So like, I knew that you um, had gone to um, s- school in Chicago, that you were a pastor. I knew that you lived in Michigan. I knew um, a little bit Boy. about your background. I knew that you, it seemed to me like at one point you were known as like the mattress guy. Um, <laughs> Gosh. Okay. That's like, enough. That's enough. You know, so, so I am very particular wow. about where I thought I, I saw you parked out front of my house and now I know that was you. Oh my God. I was in, I was in Michigan that. when I stumbled upon your content. Yeah. You, but and your background, you're from like, like we're actually from like the same area. She's near Metro Detroit. She wears the tiger's hat. She's not yep. just flexing it because she likes the hat. You're from that area, right? Eight Mile and Telegraph, yeah. Dude, this I mean, originally, like answer. I didn't grow up there. I grew up all over the state, but like that's that's where I was born. Wow. So Shalene's got like a little a little gangster to you. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I call I call it white trash, and I know that offends people, but I can say it because. <laughs> It's, You're going to get you know, canceled. You, you never lose go. the white trash in you, you know? Cancel this woman now. I think she's been around long enough. She ain't scared to be canceled. No worry um, about it. So, yeah, guys. So we're going to di- deep dive into, we're going to talk about this MRR because she did this crazy interview with her son and it, like, everybody's got an opinion on what this MRR thing is that's going around. Then I'm I'm literally going to ask her, like, what are the three things to do when it comes to social selling, three things not to do? Because... Um, a lot of you guys are new to social selling. This is your first time selling a product online and who better to ask than like the Titan in digital marketing than Shalene Johnson. So we're going to get right into it. Your time is precious. So let's go. But before we do, so Shalene, before we go through the resume of everything you've done from like beach body to creating content, you've done it all. And that's why even before this interview, she's like, yeah, I've seen it all. Nothing is yeah. scary to this woman. She doesn't need to tear everybody down in order to build herself up. By the way, I want to, I want to, no, no, I'm going to do this after. So let me just ask you point blank. Who are you? Like, how would you describe yourself? Like, cause you're mm. known by so many people now you've got hundreds of thousands of people following you on social, but who is Shalene Johnson? At my core, I'm a teacher. I love uh, solving problem. I take complicated, complex things that intimidate people and try to simplify them and just make their lives easier. And that's been the through line for everything I've done as an entrepreneur since I was um, 19 years old. You know, my first business was, uh, I was selling, I was flipping cars. That's how I paid my way through college. I, um, did, my parents didn't have them. No one had gone to college in my either side of my family. And my parents were excited for me, but they're like, so how are you going to pay for it? You know, not like we don't have the money, but they're like, this is exciting. What is your idea? Right. So my dad gave me the idea to buy a car from the state auction in Michigan, a state owned vehicle, an orange El Camino was my first car and uh, bought that from the state auction, had it painted black, had it, you know, the back end lifted, sold it, made a couple thousand dollars. And what then I bought another car and another car and another car. And I just kept doing that, like flipping cars. Love that. And I continued to do that through as I was a college student at Michigan State. And it was like, this is a pain in the butt. Like this is, people don't show up when they say they're going to show up. I'm negotiating late at night with like grown men. And I'm I, like this petite blonde college student. It felt very um, sketchy and scary. So I'm like, what if I developed this idea where everybody came to one place on one day? And I created this idea called the All Michigan Auto Swap Meet. And I, it was the first place where uh, buyer, private buyers and sellers came together. And I just took a small percentage of, the sale in exchange for the convenience. And that was, you know, that's been the through line of everything that I do. I'm like, okay, this is complicated and a pain in the butt. There's got to be an easier way. Right. Yeah. I love that. And so you've sold all sorts of, you've sold physical products, you've sold digital products. Is there anything you haven't sold? (laughs) Uh, Feet picks yet. And I Not, do say yeah. Okay. I just I do say yeah, because if I could figure out a way. Yeah, we'll put no, the link so, in the so we'll I've put done, the link I've in the done, description. Yeah, I so you know, I had lots of different entrepreneurial pursuits and none of them were really taking off. I and mean, I was trying to do like 10 things at once. And then I had a mentor, um, I'm not even sure what year it was in, many years ago, who said, Well, the reason why you're n- you're working so hard and none of these are like the thing is because you're trying to do all the things like just pick one thing, become known for one thing. And Mm -hmm. so I set aside a lot of things I was doing. Like I was trying to teach women how to start their own business. I was selling eBooks. I was, you know, all these crazy things. And I was like, okay, 
I think there's an opportunity here with this little side hustle that I have with fitness. I was creating workout programs for other fitness instructors, but I was also doing the 10 other things. But I'm like, there's so much demand for this. It wasn't that it was the thing I was the most passionate about. There was just so much demand. I'm like, I have to go all in on this. I'm going to become known for this. And then I'll go back to doing all the other things I want to do. So then I created a, a company with my husband, I don't know, 1997, called Powder Blue Productions. We created a fitness apparel line, certified instructors, a certification program, licensed music and workouts to instructors that caught the attention of infomercial companies in 20, 2004. In 2005, I had my first number one infomercial. Since then, I've sold tens of millions of exercise DVDs. I'm in the Guinness Book of World Records. That's so weird. Yeah, tens um, of millions, guys. She sold tens, tens millions, of yeah. millions of dollars. It was crazy. It was uh, just crazy because I didn't, yeah. I never studied fitness. I, I always felt, I always felt like a, an imposter. Yeah, and I remember I, seeing you on Good Morning America and they're like, tell, I, I was like, I wonder what's going through her head. And you're saying during those moments, you're on Good Morning America, you've got this imposter syndrome going in the back of your head. Yeah, I was always like, I, I, don't, I don't really, I don't, I'm not sure that I'm that comfortable here. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. And, what do you, say you know, to people that like, because you've been really good at pivoting. And I think that's the secret sauce in your life is as, a, as an entrepreneur, usually the successful entrepreneurs are the ones that are able to adapt to changing technology, to changing methodologies, to changing product lines, to changing mm -hmm. niches. You've done that. And I think that's what you've, you've tested, you know, the, the test of time, so to speak. So, but the one thing that has been consistent through all of those things is Shalene Johnson. It's you. So can you talk about the power of personal branding? Do you even like that title? How would you? you sure, yeah. That? Yeah, what is that? Yeah, I don't think enough people think about that. You know, like I was even when I was looking at your history at one point being known as the mattress guy. Like when we, when we attach ourselves to something other than who we are, um, you really can stay stuck and you can really limit yourself. There was a time where I was known as like the people were trying to give me that moniker, the turbo girl. Hmm. And I was like, I, I really am going to have to very carefully resist this because I, I don't ever want to stay stuck. I think personal brand is your reputation. And no matter what it is you're doing right now, unless you're someone who's controlled by fear you're going to try other things. You're going to do other things. You're going to evolve. And if you evolve, the one thing that needs to be consistent and constant is you. Like you are the through line. You, you know, I run into people that I worked with 25 years ago and they're like, oh my God, you're the same, you know? Yeah. Because you know, I, I, when people say you've transformed or you reinvent yourself, I hate that because I've never, re I would never reinvent myself. I just evolve. Yeah, don't you feel like your strength is is your self awareness? You know who you are, and you, and you're helpful. proud of it. Yeah, it's super helpful. Yeah, because like you're not really apologetic. Well. You're like I watch your reels. You're talking about like, hey, nail techs. Uh, I don't know whether to get a short nail or a long nail. Da, da, da. Like that has nothing to do with any of the products or services you sell. That's and right. you're not, and you don't care. You're just being no. you. And people get a sense that this girl, if I met her in public, she'd probably be a lot like she is on her Instagram stories. Probably's like this around the dinner table with her family. And, and I see a lot of people going, I'm really struggling selling online. I'm really struggling. Yeah. And then I yeah. watch the stuff. It's like, cause you're, you're playing this like 2d character. Dude. Right. Work. People want to know who yes. are you, your humor, your personality. Like it's okay. Can I tell you something that I, I, I still do not have an explanation for it. It still boggles my mind that there are people who are really popular online, like online personalities, uh, even people in the digital marketing space. And I've met them in person and I'm like, it, it's so obvious when they're on camera, they're like, this is their camera personality. It's like really phony voice. And it's like really animated. It's just yeah, like, yeah. it's so weird and so cheesy. And um, I think I just want to be myself because that kind of person bugs me. Yeah. So yeah. I always tell people like, don't, if whether it's the type of content that is on your last nerve and it bugs you just because it's popular, don't copy it. If there's a certain like style that's working on social media, but it just doesn't sit well with you. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. Like be authentic and true to yourself. It's the easiest thing to do. And eventually the people who are supposed to find you will.
Yeah. So I want to call you out on something. Um, All right. Because I think you demonstrated a master class. So guys, we're going to get into this MRR conversation at this point, because what Shalene did is really, really next level. And she probably knew she was doing it, but didn't let on. She was no. So you, you did this review of this digital marketing course that's kind of taken Instagram and TikTok reels by storm, right? Thousands mm -hmm. of people have signed up to sell a digital marketing course uh, where they have the master reselling rights. And you did a very, very objective 30,000 foot review of it. And you gave the pros and the cons, you and your son. And then you know what I was waiting for at the end of your interview? I was waiting for the call to action for us to go buy your thing. You didn't do that. Why didn't you try to pivot and sell a product at the end of you doing a review about something else in, in the same space you're in? Well, I'm trying to build trust, right? And also you have to know timing, like when it's appropriate to make the ask, if you will. And I, I'm, I have a different perspective about selling. I, um, I, I don't, I'm not a fan of selling even though I love that that's your last name. I am a fan of explaining and wow. ex ex really thoroughly explaining something because I would never want anyone to buy something that is a, the wrong fit. The same way if I worked in the shoe department, I wouldn't try to talk somebody into buying a great shoe that was two sizes too big. So I'm a really big fan of like explaining everything. And when you explain everything and you tell people like who something is for and who it's not for, then they can make a decision for themselves. And then I never have to feel slimy about selling um, because I'm not going to sell. And there's plenty of times where I talk to people, I'm like this, you're not ready for this, this thing. I'm sure, however, I did in that YouTube, I, if not in the video, somewhere in the description, there's probably a, a freemium or an opt-in, if you will, that suggests, yeah. you know, but, so in other words, we're keeping the audience warm and we're always growing by building leads, you know, so I'm always I, building leads. But here again, I don't think you're giving yourself enough credit because a lot of people would have taken this opportunity to go after something that is a threat or is a comp is seen as a competition to your products, to your services. Yeah. And you would have attacked it and then drove the attention toward your thing. I think if you would have done that, people would have felt like this is so insincere. It doesn't feel genuine. It feels like she's attacking something in order to yeah, drop yeah. her products. Well, stuff. that comes from, a, a, and I, you and I both have seen people do that, right? Yeah, and I think comes, tear people from, down so that we can build ourselves up. And it also comes from a place of scarcity. Like when I, yeah. this started getting on my radar, the people who were reaching out to me were twofold. It was people who were really worried it was going to affect their network marketing business. And it was people who were interested in it. And they're like, I trust you. Both parties are saying, I trust you. What is this? Or some people were saying like, people trust you. Will you tell people not to do this? And I was like, well, I, what are you guys talking about? Like, this is a marketing term. So what, it was like saying, it was like saying, what is this affiliate marketing? I'm like, this is a term. And I think people have, that's where the confusion lies mm -hmm. is because it's sold with a, type of um, resale lights, licensing almost, resale rights, yeah. if you will. And yeah. so because of that, again, people who aren't familiar too much with this space have uh, have labeled it, has have labeled the course as MRR as opposed to the way that they have the ability to resell it. Yeah, the placeholder. Keep the course, like, wait a second, wait a second. What are we talking about here? Yeah, it's it's become known as MRR. The, the product, the digital marketing course, when you know, no, 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 that's just the, the licensing term that comes with the actual course. And a lot yeah. of people are selling based on the master resale rights rather than just talking about what the actual course is. And I think that's that's what stuck out to you because you, again, I asked her in her first question, who is she? She says, I'm a teacher and I really like explaining things. And then I asked yeah. her about selling. She says, I'm not really, I'm not really into selling. I'm really good at, at explaining things. I think that's yeah. the secret sauce here, folks, is stop trying to sell people into things. It may not be fit. Let me ask you this. Do you believe everybody is set up to be a digital marketer, to be an affiliate marketer? Should everybody do this? No, 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 absolutely not. You know, um, I believe that there there's so many legitimate ways to make money online. But you have to find the one that fits with 
your personality, the amount of time you have, your skills, your knowledge, your social media following, the your the urgency in which you need to start making money, like all of these things need to factor in to your decision to get into it. Because can anyone make money at network marketing? No, can, or everyone can. Can everyone make money selling MR MRR rights of their of a digital program? No, but can some people? Sure. Right. And because there are scammy people who do it, just name it. Like whether we're talking about the church or politics or car salesmen or the beauty counter, like it doesn't matter if there are people who are scammy in every industry, that doesn't mean you dismiss the whole industry as being yeah. illegitimate. Yeah. And I like what you said. Like I just have it. I have a DM here of a young woman that says, Hey, I'm really interested in the course, but I'm still skeptical. Any words you can share to help alleviate that. And I sent her a voice message back. I'm like, yeah, you probably shouldn't do it. Don't start. You might fail. Like I, I just, I gave her all the negative stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Smart. I think I, I used to do sales training for a company called Sandler and we would work with like these fortune 500 companies. And we taught this principle called negative reverse selling. I don't know if you've yeah. ever heard of this. Absolutely. So it's when you say something as the sales person that isn't in your best interest. So literally that lady is literally giving me a softball guy. She's saying, I'm skeptical, but can you tell me something that will make me buy? That's literally what she's saying. If I would have hit that softball and said, oh yeah, it's the best course ever. Like I may, you're going to make so much money, zero to 10 K in a month and say all these stupid flashy terms that literally crush your credibility for anybody. Like if I started saying that, I bet you I wouldn't be here with Shalene Johnson. Um, right, that's and, true. And I, and I could have just like shilled a bunch of crap, but instead I said, well, consider that if you start this, one of the greater than zero outcomes could be that you fail at this. Are you okay with that? You know, do you have time to dedicate toward this business? Not this get rich quick scheme, but it will become a business for you. And, and I met her with that and she's like, oh, I see what you did there. And I said, I'm not doing anything. I want you to consider that yeah, this yeah. is a real business. This is there's no get there's no money tree in the backyard. If I just create a reel, I'm going to get sales. Can you speak to the people who are brand new, Shaleen, to maybe they bought MRR, maybe they bought a digital course and they expected to just be millionaires overnight? Like, can you speak to them, uh, people that are brand new at social selling? That's a broad question. Um, the first thing I want to say is talk about the technique that you shared, uh, whether you call it the anti-cell or the negative cell. Yeah. Um, it's this, the cornerstone of why QVC, the Home Shopping Network, why, why those shows are still billion dollar companies like they and they never show pre-recorded content. Uh, their secret sauce is when they have somebody on, they, they, they always want the creator, the founder, the inventor, the mom and pop who came up with the idea. And when they bring you to sell on QVC, which I've sold on QVC before, you first have to go to QVC school. And what they huh. teach you there is not to sell. They teach you to explain it the way you would your best girlfriend. And when you're speaking to your best girlfriend, you're going to tell them like, this is an, um, I love this, uh, bed in a bag. It's awesome. But I will say that the, this kind of a bed, the, it always has to be dry cleaned. Like yeah, you're yeah. telling them, but like, but you should also know. Yeah. You know, and that's how you're going to be honest with your, you have to be honest with your audience. You have to, all you have is your, at the end of the day, your reputation and trust. And I think when people think about why, why aren't I able to sell? Like for, Listen, I'm not going to teach people how to sell any particular thing, but I will share with people what I believe is the the right formula to follow because it's it's just really easy and it's much more authentic and it has more integrity and it helps build trust, but it takes longer. Yeah. Yeah. And that looks like this. Um, okay, so first of all, you can't sell unless you have eyeballs. So you have to grow your social media. If you're not willing to grow your social media, then you got to pay for advertising, which isn't a bad thing. Because if let's just say that, let's just say hypothetically, I make $500 every time I sell a particular course, um, I can afford to spend up to $400 to get a customer and still be profitable. And I think people are so afraid of advertising, but yet they also hate the grind of social media. You have options. And if it's not me, if the sales or the marketing isn't making you money, well, then you, you don't have to keep pouring money into it. 
but I'm, I'm a big fan of marketing. I think that's how you 10 X anything or, you know, advertising. That's how you 10 X anything. Um, but the other option is you've got to grow your social media and you've got to grow it with people who are looking for the problem that you can solve with the thing that you're selling. Mm -hmm. And you do that on your feed post. If we're talking about Instagram or TikTok or Facebook, it's, it's your feed post. It's your face front facing content. Your stories is you won't grow your following on stories, but it's on your stories where people are, they're investigating you. They're, they're stalking you. They're watching you. They're studying you. They're trying to figure out like, do I trust her? Do I like her? First of all, I want to get to know her. Once I get to know her, do I like her? And if I like her, I, I need to stick around long enough until I see something that makes me trust you. Cause we still want to do business with people that we trust. Yeah. What uh, it leads me to my next question, which is in a world of influencers that, you know, come and go, uh, you've been in the space for, let's just say over 20 years. And why, like, honestly, why do you think you're still sticking around? Why, why are people still checking in with Shalene Johnson? And, and you're not just someone that, you know, had her flash in the yeah. pan and came and mm. went like so many thousands of others. I don't like know. Why, why um, do you honestly think that is? Because I, you've got to know. You, you um, got to have the secret sauce here. No, I just think you. I've just really always been trustworthy, like honest. I'm always. I have yeah. very, very strong principles about integrity, and uh, I, I speak about that. And I and and my actions support my words. You know, so that it just takes a long time. And I, I care very deeply about the people who I call my lifers. Uh, a lot of them have been with me for more than 25 years. Like some of these people have been with me since back when I owned fitness businesses and uh, their loyalty means the world to me. And, and, and so I've grown up with them. So there's that trust. I think that people, a new person, let's talk about a new person, a new person trusts me because they're watching my stories and they see that I don't have an agenda, hmm. but they also can tell I freaking am obsessed with talking you into getting whatever the latest thing is that I've just fallen in love with. Right. Like oh. I will, cause I'm like, Oh my God, this makes my life so much better. You guys, you <laughs> have to, this is okay. I've got really light sensitive eyes. So they get read really easy. And I found this stuff. It's Lumify. I don't have a affiliate code or anything, but this stuff, when you put these drops in your eyes, you immediately look like you have a filter on your face. It makes your eyes brighter. You look more alert, more awake, younger, and so I'm going to talk about like everything. I talk about the camera stand. I'm going to talk about the food. I'm going to talk about the Amazon shirt that I bought, the eye drops. I'm going to talk about all those things okay. without the, the thought that, okay, how does this benefit me? Yeah, because yeah. it makes my life better. So I'm going to pay it forward. And the way that benefits me is it builds this, what I call the, um, I, I then become good for it. And by good for it, I mean, I'm going to become your go-to girl because you know, if I talk about something, yeah. I've, no matter what it is, I've just saved you 10 hours of research. Yeah. Whether it's like the perfect shoe, eye drops, whatever, you know that I am not going to talk about it unless I've tried it, tested it, you know, checked out their customer service because I don't want to risk my reputation. Yeah. So I think people time and money, even when it's nothing I'm associated with. Yeah. So I, what I'm hearing is the common thread throughout your whole 20 plus year journey being online, um, an influencer, whether, whether we like the term or not, it's because people get a sense if this girl is passionate about one thing, if she talks about the next thing, it's probably just as legit as the former thing. And like, and so you've built a brand around someone that they can trust. I think that's huge. That is so important. You know, like when Kim Kardashian shows up and says, Hey guys, you know, I'm having a great day on the beach and drinks. You're like, she got paid a million bucks for that. She probably never drinks Celsius, you know? Yeah. Right. And for you, you're, you're saying almost from a tactical standpoint, like guys, it's okay to get on your reels and be like, guys, I love this new ring light I bought. It's so cool. I don't have an affiliate link. Just letting you know, you can get it on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Just doing that, you're saying, yeah. creates a sense of trust with your community. And like, that's why you sometimes will do that is because then oh, when it comes to the ask, people are like, you know, she's not just thinking about the money. Because a lot of people might think, oh, she's in it for the money. How have you overcome that? Because clearly people don't think that about you. Well, who cares? They do. I don't care. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I really don't. I, I don't worry about other people's opinions if I know the truth. Because yeah, thinking, like there's, there's just so many people are going to have different opinions. And I'm, I'm sure there are people who have negative opinions about me, but I, I'm not going to look at that. You know, I don't read my negative reviews. I don't, 
it just that would just drag me down. And I think a lot of people live their lives afraid to to be who they want to be, to say what they want to say because of thinking about someone who whose opinion doesn't matter. Like it, if they're not going to speak at your funeral, who cares what they're saying about you on the internet? Like yeah. who cares, you know? Yeah. And are, someone who's really yeah. important. I you. love that. And you know, I, I have a principle where I won't get into an argument with anybody unless they're willing to have a meal with me, you know, because when you have a meal with me, you get to know me and you, and it's pretty hard to fight over a nice meal together. And we realize we yeah. have more in common than we do different. Um, I have a principle that I'm, I'm just not going to get an argument with anyone because you yeah. just can't change people's mind. Like we just side note, we just went up to dinner with um, a much older relative. I'll say that. And uh, one of my kids was like kind of arguing with them about politics. And I'm like, why, why you, you, you will never, never change their mind. So why would you give them that energy? You know? Yep. That's good. Wisdom right there, folks. <laughs> Be known for what you're for, not for what you're against. All right. Hey. So let's talk. People are on here. They're frustrated. They're like, Shalene Johnson, if I had a minute with her, I would, I would just be like, spill the freaking tea. What are, so let's talk about it. What are the three things that you see people do and you cringe and you're like, don't do this. If you're starting out social selling online, there's three things. Maybe, maybe you got two of them, maybe one, maybe three. I don't know what you prepared, but uh, like 10. 10. Yeah. The first one is you you see people don't do this. Don't do this is just talk about your thing. Uh, Just talk about the thing that you're selling. Don't, Don't do that. Like it, it, just look, it'll kill your views on stories. If you ever do it on a feed post, it will go nowhere. Like selling on a feed post is just an absolute kiss of death. Like don't Wait, even do what it. What do you mean? What do you mean? Okay. So don't just talk about your thing. I like that. That's easy to remember. But mm-hmm. you, so like meaning if I, if you go through your Instagram stories or reels, it should. Sure. Okay. Happen. So there's stories and there's feed posts, right? So feed posts are carousel posts, reels, okay. videos, just a single text post, whatever. That's your feed. The, a feed post you should never sell. There should never be a hit the link in my bio. There just shouldn't. I mean, if you do that, you're it's a kiss of death. What you can do is create curiosity and build a rapport. So if you look at any of the um, posts on my page, like you know when I was promoting a, a recent launch of a one of our marketing academies, I, I didn't sell the academy. I just said um, comment this word if you want more information. Okay. And and then when people commented that word that I didn't ask them to go to a link. Then I sent them a DM telling them, Hey, I'm going to do a webinar. You're welcome to show. I'm going to explain what this is. If you want to show, you want to come to the webinar. So never, ever, ever sell in your feed post. It's okay to create curiosity around things there, but your feed posts should just be very niche related. They should solve a problem. They should be valuable, even more than valuable. They have to be like riveting and interesting in order to capture people's attention, you've got to have a strong hook right at the beginning. And it's got to be the kind of content where people are like, this is so good. I needed to see this. Not yeah. this is pretty. This is interesting. That's great for you. People don't want that. They want like, this is so good. Um, okay, in good. Your stories, however, in your stories, um, you've got people who aren't showing up enough. You know, you've got to like, I, I'm a New York Times bestselling author. I've written two books. I have, I don't know, almost 800,000 followers. I bet I could pull my, and I talk about that regularly. And it's part of my intro. It's part of my bio. I bet I could pull my Instagram uh, followers right now. And I I bet like less than 5% of my audience knows that. Because they people don't watch you every single day. You think that they do, but they don't. So right. you can repeat this. You know, like you talked about that blouse that you just bought that you love on Monday. You can talk about it next Monday too. Because people aren't, we don't see people's content every single day. Mm-hmm. You don't. So you've got to show up much more regularly in your stories. And here's what I want people to do. And here's an action step today. Here's what I want you to do. Pick one thing that you're newly obsessed with other than the thing that you sell. Okay. Like whether that's Celsius or eye drops or any, like a, a ring light, something you're newly obsessed with. That's a great price. You, you feel very confident in saying, you guys, this is a great buy that I found and talk about it. That's your assignment. Okay, because write that down. That, people are going to, here's what's going to happen. Talk about it and don't give people the link. Yes. And it's a special hack. Tell them like, I, I absolutely love this tripod. 
I went yeah. all over Europe with it. It's tiny. It um, can fit in a little tiny backpack or in your purse. It breaks down so small. And it was super inexpensive. And you guys, it's lightweight and it's half the price of like all the other ones I see people talking about. Yeah. Done. Now, what's going to happen is people are going to are going to DM me. They're going to reply to that story. Mm. And they're going to say, wait, what? who makes that? How much was it? Where did you get it? If I were to say it's, you know, it's made by, who is it made by? It's made by Joby. It was $49. I got it on Amazon. Here's the link. You have all the information. I haven't left anything to the imagination. I haven't left you curious. I have fire hosed all the information to you. So I haven't given you a chance to have a conversation with me. If we have a conversation, I can then say to you, what are you going to be using it for? And you're like, well, I'm a, a wedding photographer. Then I can help you not buy this. It's not right for you. And now we have a, a serious relationship where you trust me because you're like, yeah. oh, wait, she asked me some questions and this wasn't right for me. She didn't try to sell me. When we just say, this is amazing. You need it. Here's the yeah. link that's selling. Yeah, you've been playing the long game for a long time because that whole strategy is all about long game. It's not about a quick sale. It's not about making 3% on your Amazon affiliate link on a $40 product. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Okay, so that's good. Definitely don't just be about your thing. Talk about other yeah. things. Okay, what other? What's some other stuff uh, not to do? I would say don't use a link. I, I would say don't use a, a story link. Um, statistically speaking, it is, if I... If I broke down the numbers of how it diminishes your reach on stories, huh. and if you looked at then the actual click-through rate on story links, you would be horrified. You know, so not even like your link to your website, like, hey, follow me in my website. So I, what are you doing then? And so stories are really just me, my personality, that's it? No, I'll explain. So, So you might... By the way, you might see me use a story link from time to time, but when I do that, it's just because I'm being super lazy because I really don't care. Like I yeah. might use, throw an Amazon link up there just because it's easier for me than to have a you know a million conversations yeah. with my followers. Uh, but if it's something I really am interested in helping somebody figure out if it's right for them, then I won't send them a story link. I'll say comment this word, and you have to tell people what the word is. Like comment the word. If you want to know about my private podcast that I do, comment the word Patreon. So that way I can sort through my messages and I can see anyone. I can do a couple of things. I can use a, an integrated program called ManyChat, yep. M-A-N-Y-C-H-A-T. Um, I think they probably have a free version or a version that changes depending on how, many, how much usage you use. But I use ManyChat, which automates. So if someone comments Patreon, then I can automate, automatically send them a message that says like, hey, this isn't for everybody. Just so you know, it, it's like me spilling the tea. It's not personal development. It's like my personal diary. Yeah. And it's five bucks a month. Um, here's a link if you want to check it out. So I can give them more information. Or if you're not going to use an automated system, it gives you the opportunity. Because most people watching us right now don't have so many followers. Yeah. I was just going to say, I, I, I signed up. I signed up for that and I quit. Because I said, what are you doing? I'm not you Shalita Johnson. I don't have hundreds of people. And I'm missing the opportunity to get real personal That's in right. the responses and be like, hey, Jeff, not at Jeffrey135, but Great. hey, Jeff, uh, here, I'm just going to send you a DM right now. Uh, you know, that made, and then Jeff sees his DM and it's a personalized DM or a voice yep. message. Like that was the difference. And I was like, what am I doing? I'm, yeah. I'm sometimes bigger people tend to give bigger people advice when I'm like, no, you're, you have, I have 1300 on this Instagram account. Uh, I don't you know. So what I see a lot of people doing that that's, I love that you said that. Cause I agree. Like I think probably 98% of people are watching yep. us right now. Don't need a program like that. What they really need to do is have real conversations. And that's why I love tell people what to comment, give them a specific word, like um, comment the word, talk to me in all caps. That way I, I'll, I'll know you've got questions about this. Or um, yeah, comment the word, you know, like whatever. Let's say I'm selling, you know, this tripod. Comment the word tripod and I'll I'll send you some more information. Yeah. You can check it out, see if it's right for you. So that way, you, then you, like you said, now if someone comments that word, I can go and look at their profile. I can know that they're a mom. I can already know like mm -hmm. some things about them and have a, an honest conversation, not try to talk them into something. 
Yeah. And I like, again, Shalene has hundreds of thousands of people. So there's different, like she can't spend her whole day responding to people, but for you and I, if, if we're, we're just starting out or whatever, um, what do you think of people that are using the voice messages in DMs? Love it. Do you, do you love um, that let me think. Let, let me, okay. So I, I like it. I, I think it's probably effective. You know, it's really nice to hear someone's voice. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but if we're going to do that, I'd love, I would rather you do a video, send them a video where you can put mm. captions on it. And the reason why is because, you know, we know, statistically speaking, 78%, I think of people are watching social media on mute. Cause they're you at know? work. They're like, yeah, they're, at they're, work they're, they're in a they're meeting at work husband's like, asleep and they're, you know, they're like on their phone before they go to bed at night or, or the family's watching TV. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. like most of us, or you're in a nail salon. You're like, we're, like, we're not just like, it's just us alone. That's why so text I, messages I love took, video. Over, took over voice, uh, like audio voice recordings is your voice recording. You had to leave the meeting to go listen, but a text message, you could stay in the meeting and be like, yeah. Oh, Okay. So that's why I love the personal nature of a voice, Yeah, but I like the idea of voice and face. Cause when I can see your face, I trust you. And then I could put caps. You can send that video directly to someone with captions over it so they can read it and listen to it later if they want. Yeah, that's, that's really smart. I like that. Okay. What, uh, is there any other, did we, I said, don't just be about your thing. Don't post your links. Is there a third? Yeah. The, the third one is you've got to post a lot more frequently. And I, I know people don't want to do that, but just do it on your stories. It doesn't always have to be you direct camera. It can be just you showing a product on your um, countertop, but have some kind of a thing that people love following you because you're going to give them the best insights about like whatever it is, mom stuff or clothing, fashion, interior design, or all the things, but just start getting in the practice because it's going to help you when you start to feel really awkward and slimy about selling something, you'll realize like, wait, no, 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 no. It's the same thing. I'm just explaining what I like about something. And I'm being honest about the things that I don't like about it, or that might not be right for you. And I'm not selling anything. I'm just explaining this and letting people make a decision yeah. if the offer is right for them. And the last thing I have to say, um, which is, you know, when you asked, how is it you have weathered the storm, if you will, um, yeah. an, email, an email list. So I always say, email list. you show, you show me someone who, if I, if I know the size of your email list, I probably know a lot about your bank account. Really? And Yeah. Even yeah, in 2023. Hell yes. So listen to that folks. Shaleen's saying, don't ignore the emails, even though in, we live in a world of TikTok and Instagram. No, if, if I'm not adding a hundred thousand people to my, let, let's, if I'm adding 75,000 people to our email list every month, there's going to be a problem. Wow. Um, yeah. A there and even that many people out there. I mean, what I think, isn't the market super saturated, Shaleen? Haven't you touched every <laughs> soul? Don't, doesn't the whole world know who you are and what you're about and bought your product? Uh, absolutely. No, I mean, it just email is where people have asked. Those are the people who have raised their hand and said, like, I, I want to, I want to know more. I'm more serious than just somebody who, is looking at your social media. There's, I have no control over my audience seeing my content on social. That's great. I've got 800,000 followers or, or not, I think 775, whatever it is, who cares? Um, such a small fraction of that audience is ever going to see my post and mm -hmm. has the time to do something about it and actually wants to change their life with it. It's just, it's just a swipe, swipe. Maybe if I'm lucky, they give it a tap. So when I can create a freemium, an opt-in, something of value that people are like, hey, hey I want to get on your email list because I want to learn more about this. I want, I want, it, I want something deeper. I, I'm not here for a 15-second lip sync point. I actually want to know how you did that. I want to know what software program you used. I want to know how you write that, wrote that headline. I want to know how do I actually even understand conversions. Like, I want to know all of this, and I want it to be taught to me by someone who also has ADHD and can really simplify this for me. Well, then you're going to be on my email list. But I have to be constantly adding people to my email list constantly, and I do that with social media. So social media drives to my email list, and it's it has to be constant because people drop off your email list. Uh, people use a lot of fake emails. If they don't respond, then it hurts your deliverability. So, you know, like last month alone, we cleaned, you know, I think 200,000 emails off of our list just 
so that we would have better deliverability. So email is where it's at. Um, and I, I just, my advice to anyone is slow down on social for just a week to figure out what it is you can create as a freemium or an opt-in that's value, valuable enough that people are like, I want to be on your email list. You know, so get your website up, create your own email list, your own CRM. You know, this is something that they talk about in, in the program that, that you sell. And then get give people a really valuable uh, free gift in exchange for giving you their email address, whether that's a webinar or a guide, um, something that relates to your niche. What, what do you then, think of the word ebook in today's world? Is ebook still a thing? Like when you see ebook, are you like, uh. I'm no, not, not me personally. No. Yeah, th well, things here's, change. Here's I know. Five years ago, it's like, oh, that's cool. It's it. a digital yeah. book. Like, yeah. Blah, blah. yeah. But, but you're on to like, it doesn't feel what, true to you. No, people want something super fast. You need to. Super fast. Book, want, book says I got to invest a long time. Book. That's right. what that says to me. Your ADHD. Yeah, I, I might, it might even, I might even market it, something that's an ebook, but I wouldn't call it an ebook. I would call it a guide. Yeah, a guide. That word just hit, fits better for you. Yeah. So, you know, when I look at, we, uh, we were doing this this morning with team, um, looking at a list of all of our different op, opt-ins, and we have hundreds. Um, and we were That's looking at the great. ones that are performing the best and which which ones haven't. And it constantly changes yeah. because consumers' interest level changes, what they want to figure out right now changes, how quickly, what format they want it delivered in. So you have to be on top of this stuff. And it's fun. It's like a sport. When do you know when to pivot? Like when to add a different product? When to? That's a good question. Yeah. Like how have you figured that out? Because what if someone says, Shalene, I thought you were all passionate about this thing and now you're moving on to this thing and now you're moving on yeah. to this. Oh, do I've done that. I've made that mistake you... a lot. Yes. How do you do that well? Um, I've had to have people around me who tell me, whoa, simmer down now. Like <laughs> we haven't even figured this all the way out yet. Because I think when you are one of those people who like everything feels like a great idea, you become your own worst nightmare, right? Like, because you're like, everything seems exciting. You want to jump to the next sparkly thing. And so for me, it's been learning to listen to uh, the people around me, people on my team. And we, we don't move on to a new so, uh, stream of income until the one that we're working on is we can almost, and you can never set it and forget it completely, but it can almost operate on its own. I can almost step away from it. And I have the team, the infrastructure, the SOPs, the KPIs. I have all of that in process. So that's always improving, but I still have to check back in on it. So we don't add like a new stream of income, a new business center, and, and oftentimes even a new product until we're like, okay, does what, does what we have, has it, has it been optimized? Right. You know, people right. are always thinking like, oh, I need to create this new thing. No, not really. Sometimes you just have to make what it is that is working, make it better. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I, I think that's wisdom there um, because it, it sometimes people give up too soon. They go, oh, I picked up this basketball, but there's something wrong with it. Uh, so I'm going to try this baseball. All oh, the baseball's broken. I got to yeah. try the golf ball. And it's like, dude, maybe you just haven't spent enough hours working at that craft to mm -hmm. really develop it or that product, whatever it is. So um, let's kind of end on this because, you know, I, I want to let you go. You've got amazing content here, amazing ideas, fresh insight. Um, in 2023, though, what would you say is something that like excites you? Because, you know, marketing sometimes can feel like this, just a dirty world of everybody shilling crap, right? All over mm. the internet, buy this, buy this. But like, let's say there's someone that is frustrated with their nine to five. They've heard about a digital course. They've heard about digital marketing. They don't really know where to start. Like, what should they go and sell on Amazon and get an affiliate link? And that's the thing or... I heard Target has an affiliate link. Is that the path forward? Mm -hmm. What would you do in 2023 right now? Shaleen, you don't have a background. None of your 20, you can't rely on any of that. What, what would you be doing right now to build that, to just start to build that little empire online? I think it depends on all those factors I mentioned earlier. So I personally would be doing my research. I would first ask myself, okay, how much time do I have for this? No, how much time am I willing to create for this? Because no one has time. So how, how much time am I willing to create in my current schedule to do something, whatever it is? All right, so if I'm only willing to spend three hours a week, write that down. All right, how, how big is my social media following? Is it small, medium, large, mega? How much time 
Do I have a runway? Let's say, can, can I invest maybe a year at getting good at something before I make money? Or do I need to make money tomorrow? Right. Like if my kids are going to eat, like, cause that changes the game. How much skill do I have? What kind of personality do I have? How much do I have to show up on, on social media? So for example, if we're talking about digital, the making money online, right? So if I have no following, I hate social media. I have no money to start and I've got to make money now. What I would do is figure out what skill I have and I would get on a marketplace like freelancer or um, Upwork and I would market my skills. I would market my skills to the, my warm audience. I would call everyone I know and say like, hey, I can organize your Dropbox for you. Um, you, you just pay $25 an hour. It, it'll, it'll like make things so much easier. I would market my skills and I don't need a social media following. I don't need any money to start. I'm going to get money immediately. If I've got a longer runway, well, then I can do something that requires me to learn a new skill mm -hmm. and there might be more earning potential. So it's, it's really like first figuring out like your own inventory, your own space for this thing. And then going, okay, now of all these, you know, let's say 15, 20 legitimately great online opportunities, which one is the right fit for me? Yeah. Don't do something just because everyone's doing it. Don't do something because the girl you know who's, you know, killing it, you think she's really pretty and you love the way she decorates her house and you want to be her. Like, do you have her skills? Do you have her, her time? Are you willing to put in, you know what I mean? Like you got to yeah, look. Be honest with yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Self-awareness is key. It's self-discovery, yeah. self-awareness. Like what would I be good at? What's my skill? Um, if, if a baseball game is nine innings, Shalene, where are we at in this world of online, being able to make money online through digital marketing, and affiliate marketing? Like, is the game oh near God. over? Are we almost no, at the end? Or we... It just freaking started. Are you kidding me? Started. Yeah. No, it's insane. You know, um, I, I just, the one thing I wish I could help people understand sooner was that the riskiest thing you could do today is have one stream of income like that's wow. whether it's a job or a husband who's got a secure job or you know wow. one one stream is we like covid taught us that and, and i'm not saying like i'm not just talking to entrepreneurs versus people who have a steady job i'm saying both of those things are one stream you want to make sure the stream that you're secure with right now like get it solid and start building another asap because Everything right now is is volatile in terms of, you know, the job market, um, the, the state of the global economy, AI, automation, all of these things are massively changing the workforce. And the people who are slowest to figure that out is my generation. Gen Xers were like, and now we're freaking out because we're like, oh, my God, I hate social media. Now I got to figure it out. Oh, my God, I hate technology. Stop. Tell yourself a better lie. Tell yourself you're good at these things because. You, you're there's just the way people used to retire that just doesn't happen anymore, mm -hmm. you know. And and um, I just I just think it's so much easier than people realize. So get your kids. If today both of my kids are entrepreneurs, and yeah, this, you, this I want to. But I, I would saw say, your son in digital marketing. I was going to ask you, like, what uh -huh. do you think? Do you think men have a disadvantage or an advantage in the digital marketing space? I hope I don't offend anyone. I think they no, just yeah. your honest opinion. The non-canceled Shaleen and gets to share what the moment, they actually I feel like they have. I feel like they have the advantage, and I could be wrong. When wow. it comes to like the, the trust, like I don't know, like when I used to be a waitress, and the guys who were waiters were jerks and they weren't very good. And I'm like, why do they always get better better tips? Why was huh. there, why was there, it's just like there's just like you, I don't know what it is. I think there's an same is true in fitness. Like there aren't very many male fitness instructors, but the ones, the ones that who are becoming fitness instructors, they, they really like, right. I don't know what it is. And I could be wrong, but I, I will say this right now there's, and I, you know, I speak for a lot of big digital marketers and I, I first question I always ask them, I'm like, how is your audience shifted? And um, it used to be all men were their avatars and customers. Now it's like 90% female. Really? The where where have all the men gone? It's a good question. I don't know. They're sports betting and buying crypto. <laughs> no. I think they're still in digital. I still think they're in digital marketing. I think that they... Um... See, I just see it as an awesome opportunity to disrupt. As just being a guy, I stand out from the pack. I, yep. like, I like those odds. 
you know. Um, but I don't base everything I do just like, well, I'm a guy, hear me roar, or I'm a woman, you should listen to me. It doesn't matter at the end of the day. People are going to like, like I follow men and women online. You probably do too. And it's yeah. independent as to whether or not they're male or female. It's their thought leader. They say stuff. You believe them. You, you leaned into what I was doing. I'm leaning into you. It's so I don't, I, I'm not a victim because I'm a man or I'm not a no, hero. No, that's, yeah, no. But, yeah, I've never, like, it's an interesting question, but I would yeah. never, I would never let statistics or even someone's opinion of like whether there's an opportunity because you only, you only need a 1% chance if you're betting on yourself, you know, yeah. like you, you want to yeah. be the outlier. And, and so I, I would never let that stop me. And I think fear does stop a lot of people. They stay stuck. They, they don't evolve. They're afraid to try something new because they have this identity someplace else. And they think like, will it ever get better? Like maybe I've peaked. I don't know. Or they're just like, they're afraid to try something new, but I just believe that something that whatever I'm doing right now is God's way of preparing me for what I'm going to be doing next. And I don't have to worry about what that is because I know it's going to show up and then I'll be like ready for it, but It'll you can't right. be afraid of it. Yep. I love that. All right. So where can people find you? They they've enjoyed this conversation. They're like, I like this girl. I want to learn from her. Where, where do they go next? Are they watching this on YouTube? They're on YouTube. Yeah. Maybe this okay. is an Instagram short. Who knows? Yeah. Right. Okay. To chop um, it all up. On Instagram, I'm at Shalene Johnson at, uh, and when you're on YouTube, it's Shalene Johnson. My channel name is Shalene Johnson. The Shalene show is my weekly podcast, but if you want like business, business and for your audience, business marketing, all of the growth on social media, I would say to go to Brock 11 Johnson underscore. That's where we post up all of our uh, digital marketing content. Awesome. You got so many, you're like an octopus. You got your feet everywhere. <laughs> well, not all at once though. We, we did all <laughs> one stream at one tentacle at a time. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's awesome. Well, thank you for coming on the channel. I've really enjoyed the conversation and I just appreciate all the support. Thank for the you. Guys. Same, so thank same. You. I appreciate you. You're all right, awesome. guys, make sure uh, our next interview on this channel, I'm interviewing uh, the top seller currently in the world who's selling a digital marketing course in 13 weeks. She made $900,000. So if you want to see that interview, make sure you like, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. I love her. I love her. All right. Subscribe to the channel for the next interview. I'm telling you, Fran's interview is coming up next Wednesday. Subscribe right now. Hit the notification bell. Okay, bye.